Joining us now is Representative Ron Estes, the congressman serving the 4th District of Kansas, who is in the Capitol at the time of that unrest. So, Congressman, I appreciate you joining us tonight. You and your colleagues, of course, you were taking place in this event that a lot of people were looking forward to. But, of course, the headlines from today aren't necessarily the Electoral College vote, at least as of not yet. Can you explain what the scene looked like today in the nation's capital? Yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate. I mean, January 6th is a, is a very important date every four years for us to go through and, and do the certification for the electors and, and to have that process disrupted by, by protesters who ultimately decided to take it upon themselves to, uh, to storm the Capitol, to, uh, to break in and, and, and commit violence. And, and actually, it looks like one individual has been shot and had taken to the hospital. Uh, that's really unfortunate that that situation happened to to disrupt uh, our country because we're a country of law and order and and we need to we need to obey those rules. And I want to say that I'm first glad to see that you're safe. You and your colleagues, it looks like nobody was harmed in this whole process. But as you mentioned, there was one person who was shot. That's always a tragedy. Uh, we're still waiting for answers as to exactly who motivated this, if there were any agitators, anything like that. But as far as the scene inside the building, Capitol Hill police responded rather quickly. Were you pleased with the way that they responded to this otherwise unprecedented event? Yeah, I really have to say a lot of positive accolades for uh, the Capitol Police and uh, as well as other law enforcement. You know, when you have a crowd that size that uh, actually storms the building uh, like they did, uh, obviously they're outnumbered. Uh, they, they had done some preparation before this. There were more people uh, working security today than, than normal uh, because of the process that was going on. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it's just you can easily get overwhelmed with a, with a large number of people that when, whenever a protest does turn violent. Yeah, I mean, it's a hard situation to deal with because, I mean, uh, Capitol Hill police especially, there's a limited number. The number of protesters that we saw out were in the thousands, but I think it is important to note that the couple of people who did storm the Capitol building, it was by far a minority of the otherwise uh, peaceful protest that was taking place in the nation's capital. But what does this mean now for the January 6th certification? We know that you and your colleagues are going to be heading back to the Capitol building, continuing this vote, but does that change anything as far as the constitutional deadline or anything like that? No, we, we still have our work to do, and uh, it's unfortunate that this disrupted it. Uh, it's unfortunate that it happened at all, particularly the violence. I mean, folks need to, to be held accountable for that, uh, but we need to get back, and, and uh, as I said, we're, we're a nation of law, and, and we need to obey those rules, and, and uh, that's what we need to get back to doing and, and continuing doing the people's business. And so you, I presumably, have a very long night ahead of you. In fact, even before going into this process, which has now been delayed, a lot of people were saying that this could go well into the night, perhaps 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, because what happens now for all of our viewers is that each state where there is an objection, you split into your own sessions, the House and the Senate, and then I believe it's two hours of debate for each one of those states. Is that correct? Do you have a long night ahead? That re really is. We are expecting a, a, a long night. Uh, we were previously, even before this got disrupted, uh, just because you do a roll call of the states and 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 then there is a two hour window if if any states are objected to. And and I expect uh, uh, at least a, a couple of more states to be objected to. You have to have both a House member and a senator object to that state in order for uh, us to split up into our separate chambers. And of course, right before the incident earlier t uh, today did take place, uh, that was the case. In fact, I believe Arizona was the first state to reach those objections. I believe you were getting ready for those debates. So you did have a House member and a Senate member, for example, voicing their objections to the upcoming uh, vote. The, the one that we know for sure was going to be Arizona, but we're hearing it could be up to six other states. What exactly do you hope to get out of this process? Because we know it's going to be an up and down vote. The House, of course, uh, won't go along with these efforts, although we hear that you and 100 of your colleagues are objecting to the Electoral College vote. Do you want to commission out of this or maybe to pressure a special counsel? What's the desired end goal here? Yeah, there, 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 we were in the middle of the discussion of, of Arizona, uh, both the House and the Senate. We're about 30 minutes into that. Uh, and, and the objection and the reason that, that I went through and, and have signed on to the objection for those states is that you know, the Constitution, uh, as well as the uh, Electoral Count Act, uh, which guides the process we're supposed to follow, says that the state legislature is supposed to determine how electors are selected for each respective state. It's not the judiciary, certainly not Congress. Uh, it's not some election official in the state, uh, whether it's statewide or countywide. Uh, but in, in these states, we saw that uh, rulings were made that uh, violated what was set up as, by the state legislators. And so the, the objection process was to, to say that uh, these electors weren't selected by the process that uh, was established by their respective state legislators.
And that's the exact argument that we've heard from not only you, but your colleagues, too, who are going to eventually be going back into the halls of Congress and making that very argument in front of the entire nation, but especially your other colleagues who may not share your same perspective or uh, who may be sharing that same perspective, but aren't necessarily willing to go as far. We've heard that from people such as Tom Cotton and uh, other Republican lawmakers as well. But, Congressman, I know that you do have a long night ahead of you, so I will let you go. Once again, I'm glad to see that you're safe, and I thank you for coming on the program tonight and giving us an update about these events. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this uh, very important process in our in our nation's governing process. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Congressman.